this episode of Artloft, Fear of Missing Out, a haunting music video from Cog Noman. How one dance studio is helping dancers create. We do not place demands in the lab on what you are to work on, what you are to explore. Uh, it is truly a creative place for uh, you as a choreographer to come in with the best tools at your disposal and just start. Music bringing young men together. There's a certain thought that everybody has when they hear you're from Detroit. Especially when they hear you're from Detroit and they hear you like to sing, because Detroit is the heart of music. It's all ahead on this episode of Artloft. Funding for Artloft was made possible by Friends of Art. Hi, I'm Lolo Ruskin, and from the studios at South Florida PBS, this is Artloft. Welcome back. I'm Lolo Reskin. This week on Artloft, it's all about performance. We'll check in on some unique programs teaching the next generation of voice and dance artists. First, we tune in to Cog Noman, an electro-pop psych rock duo based in Miami. Their latest music video, Fear of Missing Out, features acclaimed performer Anna Mendez as she meanders through Little Haiti on a bewitching night. Testament to an inner flame It may burn 
coming up on Artloft. We do not place demands in the lab on what you are to work on, what you are to explore. Uh, it is truly a creative place for uh, you as a choreographer to come in with the best tools at your disposal and just start. We're so lucky to have Buffalo Brown from Cognomen here in the studio with us today. Thanks so much for stopping by. My pleasure, Lolo. Tell us a little bit more about the Fear of Missing Out video and kind of how the concept came to you guys. Uh, well, the concept came from the director, Robert Sawyer, who did an amazing job. He works with uh, a lot of also local uh, film production, be it Borish, uh, Third Horizon. And uh, he had an idea where he wanted to just capture uh, the mystique and the longing that you could find within elements of the song and what the theme is, of course, fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. um, and we also kind of like to let the audience decide what it means to them. Different people have different ideas as to what it means. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, I feel like it means seizing the day, you know, not looking back and wondering what if, what if, what if, just going for it. Tell us a little bit more about Cognomen, mm -hmm. about how you guys got started and maybe what some of your musical influences are. Sure. Uh, Cognomen started with Ulysses and I. Uh, Ulysses is the drummer. Uh, around late 2011, we started recording some music together as a duo and we're really liking it. And uh, yeah, ever since then, we've been progressing into writing actual songs with verses and choruses, etc. And our influences, the one main one that just binds us both is Brian Eno, you know, father of ambient as they call him sometimes. And um, just we, we, it resonates a lot with us, the use of texture, sound, uh, music belonging in a place, taking you somewhere, creating your own world, so to speak, and also the, uh, just the emphasis on groove, yeah. Well, I've seen you guys live and you definitely get a groove going, so tell everybody a little bit more about where they can follow you guys and find out about your next show. The simplest one is cognomenmusic.com. Uh, our website has our Spotify, our Instagram, all those good things. Uh, on Instagram, we're at cognomenmusic. And with those two addresses, you should find everything you need about us. There's even a link to uh, an awesome local record store where you can find our music as well. How about that? Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming by. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Buffalo. Coming up on Artloft. There's a certain thought that everybody has when they hear you're from Detroit, especially when they hear you're from Detroit and they hear you like to sing because Detroit is the heart of music. The Broadway Dance Lab in New York City is a place where dance makers can test new ideas and work in different styles. It's considered a choreography incubator, giving creators the much needed resources that they need to bring their dance visions to life. WNET New York Public Media has this profile. Currently, there are no other places in New York City that exist like Broadway Dance Lab. We provide space for choreographers and a dance company to choreographers so that all a choreographer has to do is walk in the room and begin. We do not place demands in the lab on what you are to work on, what you are to explore. Uh, it is truly a creative place for uh, you as a choreographer to come in with the best tools at your disposal and just start. Just play, follow your impulses if that's what you feel like doing and seeing where that leads or coming in with a pre-planned idea and seeing if it works so that they have no concern whatsoever but the artistic process. I, as an artistic director, do not dictate what a choreographer works on. So I could reach out to Marcelo Gomez, for instance, from the, uh, the ballet world, and he could come in and want to do something hip hop. I know that sounds somewhat outrageous to some people, but this is the freedom that we're looking to offer our artistic community. 
This was really, for me, uh, an incredible invitation to, to say, hey, we are giving you the studio for four hours um, each day and you can create whatever you want. And it's fine if you don't show something, and it's fine if you do show a little piece of it. If you want to just talk to your dancers, you can. And to have that blank canvas, you are able to be much more creative. It's not easy being a well-known dancer and becoming a choreographer after. It's definitely very hard, but because I think that the expectations are very high. I think people come to see me in a performance expect the same kind of level of my choreography. And I am finding my voice, I am finding my vocabulary, I am experimenting, and this is what Broadway Dance Lab has given me. Wait and see Broadway Dance Lab is the only place that employs dancers at a competitive salary to retain their services. We also give them insurances. If, if a dancer gets injured, that can be a very costly thing for them. They have doctor's appointments and physical therapists, and um, recuperation can be very, very uh, expensive for them. So if I'm a choreographer in a room with my dancers and I know they don't have workman's comp insurance, am I going to ask them to try something that might be a little bit dangerous. So my philosophy is we secure these dancers with competitive salaries and insurance in order to allow them to feel the freedom to try anything. I don't think it can be underestimated uh, the effect that working with all of these multiple choreographers has on the dance company itself. And that company of young dancers. So one week, uh, they have Marcelo Gomez. The next week, they're working with Andy Blankenbuehler, a Tony Award winner, who may come in and work on some pre-production for a new musical he's developing. Last my soul, Kirk was on a road. Person of the week in every Greek opinion poll. Working with uh, Camille Brown. Uh, who may wish to do as many two-minute sequences as she possibly can. And, and all of these dancers are hired so that they can do as much of that as possible and provide as much of that for each choreographer as possible. I, for one, have seen the dance world around me be very segregated. You are either a Broadway choreographer or a modern choreographer or a ballet choreographer by gathering together the dance community at large that we can strengthen the products that we see on the stage. I think that as dancers we train our bodies to over the years, many many years, to be able to do that certain step or to be able to be the perfect Juliet or the perfect Swan Queen. And I think that you do need time as well to develop yourself as a choreographer. Okay, the first thing is the braid didn't work, I just wrote braid. After Sutanu, and we go, I don't know. You don't know what the future holds. You create something that you are feeling at the moment. In this case, I wanted to make this story. Perhaps it could you know, become a play, it could become a musical, it could become, it could stay as a ballet. But what I know is that we were all invested for those hours being creative in the studio. And that's really what I wish people would see more in our art form. The process of those maybe one or two dancers have pushed themselves to such limit that they didn't know that they could do. That is a really uh, a, an incredible point that I think that Broadway Dance Lab has done. Of course, it's nice if something has a future. Of course, somebody, if, if, they, if they see it and they like it, um, but it's also okay if it not, because I know that dancers and I have, have done something and we have worked towards something.
I cannot tell anyone where we will be in 10 years, but the arts community, from the, the ballet world to the Broadway world, need a place like this. So it's my firm belief that all it takes is uh, the awareness that it's here now, that we're here to stay, that we need your support, and it will find its way. Next week on Art Loft. If I suddenly came upon one face to face going through a trail, I would begin to talk in a normal voice with the creature. The Indians say, Cheetah Tom O, how you doing? Maybe I'd do that, I don't know. It's their home. And if you ever encounter something of that nature, you need to give it its distance and leave it alone. You're gonna love this next piece. WTVS Detroit Public TV introduces us to the Vision Male Ensemble at the Detroit School of the Arts. Motown, jazz, gospel, you name it, this all-male team sings them all. And in the process, the ensemble has created a band of brothers who are supporting each other through music. Check it out. It's something about the male voice when they all come together that everybody takes notice. And it's something about the warmth of the voice. And I think that's why it really just hits everybody. There's a certain thought that everybody has when they hear you from Detroit, especially when they hear you from Detroit and they hear you like to sing because Detroit is the heart of music. Vision is the Detroit School of Arts Male Ensemble. And um, it came about when I first started teaching at DSA. I came in, they had all these girl groups. And I was like, okay, what do the fellas do? And so we decided that all the fellas who were vocal majors would come into one group. And they, the fellas came up with vision. And they came up with it said, because we are what, what DSA is, but we're also the people who are gonna make a difference as we grow older. So our vision is that we're gonna be different. And that's how you all came out. Purpose of vision is to build up young males in a perfect manner not a negative. We help young males understand the whole vision of how males are supposed to be, how they're supposed to look, how they're supposed to treat other people as an, uh, an equal to you, really. We do a little bit of everything. Um, we do Motown, we do jazz, we do gospel, we do spirituals, we do classical. So we do a, a array of everything. So wherever we're going, we can hit everybody's need. You like a bridge, Vision sings a lot of songs that are focused towards brotherhood. So singing those songs in such a large group of young men, in such a large group of young men that I've grown close with, it's, it's a different feeling. It's not the regular type of feeling you get when you're with probably a project choir and you're singing uh, just random music. It's just the feeling of having your brothers around you and singing with your brothers is magical. When they're singing, what do I feel in their voices? For some of them, I hear relief from problems that they may have. Um, for some of them, I hear leadership. Um, I hear a longing to make the world better. I hear um, some saying, um, not a longing, but I am going to do it. When I don't connect and understand the words that we're singing or the piece that we're singing, um, I won't feel anything because I didn't put anything into it. So once I put something into it, that's when I can start feeling the emotion of the song. There are so many lessons that I've learned, not only through vision, but through the opportunities. Um, that DSA and Ms. V has put in my life. I've learned to adapt and I've also learned to work quickly. Uh, I've learned so much. It just amazes me how she could change a, 
Like I never, I didn't expect that to happen. You have to make sure the audience knows what the song is about. Let's try it one more time and over pronounce the words. And I came to DSA thinking I was about to be the top guy around the school and then I heard certain people who already who are like seniors and they've been through all the education and everything and I'm just like wow and I was like I want to be like that guy someday. All the the knowledge Miss V gives us from her education and how we just bond so well with our um, in the brotherhood that we share. Sometimes Miss V can work on us personally sometimes she'll give information that we can all use so it can help us in many different ways. Ah, 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 and the eye. Ah, ready? And. I had one young man who has never sung a solo, and in class you could barely hear him. When we did the show Shaloza, this short one, that was his first solo, and I said, sing it. He looked at me like, what? I said, sing it. He's like, and finally he opened up, and I think it frightened himself because this big voice came out, and he was like, wow. So now he's like, okay, I can do this now. It can be a big change, it can be a small change. Uh, the big changes is the, um, the attitude they have, their, um, their first day in uh, vision, it'll change because they see whole different personalities all inside the group, and then they'll burst out and uh, show their, uh, their side of their color. And so it blends in with everybody else in their feel home. perform different music and have it interpreted 40 different types of ways and have each person sing it from their personal uh, standpoint and personal point of view. It really showcases that everyone can come together, everyone can join as brothers, everyone can join as family and still come together and sing. Um, and it shows the best of the best uh, in Detroit, I feel, because I love my brothers. Brothers forever. Thanks for joining us this week on Artloft. Connect with us on social media at Artloft SFL and watch us anytime on the PBS app by selecting WPBT2 as your local station. For Artloft, I'm Lolo Reskin. See you next time. Funding for Artloft was made possible by Friends of Art.